What's up everybody? Welcome to Coding with Chaim. In this week's video, we're going to take a look at a tool called Immer.js. So I think if you want to just ask me what is Immer, the sort of simple answer that I might say is Immer is the best tool that you may or may not be using as a React developer. Why, would I, why do I say that? Because obviously as React developers, we all know one of the most important things that we have to be very careful about is to actually not mutate our state. Whenever we're trying to update state, we have to do it in a sort of immutable fashion. The problem is what happens if let's say you have state or data that is actually rather complex. It might have sort of nested objects. So for example, let's take a look at an example that I have right here on the screen. So say, see this person object here. So this person object has under the key called personal. And then this personal key is in itself an object that on it also has a key called address, which is in itself an object. And so now we have this person, that personal, that address. And so now what we want to do is we actually have an input here. It's going to go ahead and try to update the value of street that lives on address, that lives on personal, that lives on the person. So again, the hierarchy is we've got the person object that has a key called personal, which is an object. It has another key on it called address, which is an object that has a key on it called street. And that's the very key that we're actually trying to update. Now, the problem, of course, is we are React developers. We don't want to mutate our state, right? So how do we actually do this? One thing that I should point out in case some of you may or may or may not be familiar with this, but the actual spread operator that we've all pretty much been using for the longest time now to actually go ahead and make copies of our objects within JavaScript, what it actually does, and I think this is actually done by design, is it actually only makes a shallow copy. So what that means is in our case, if I'm actually making a copy of the person object, the sort of personal key on the person object, which in itself is an object, doesn't actually get copied. It still has the same reference as it did before. So even though person is now a new object, the personal still stays the same object. So if I actually go ahead and mutate personal, I'm not safe. I'm actually still mutating my state. And so therefore, we actually have to have multiple spreads. So in this case, I'm basically making a copy of the entire person object. But again, at this point, the address is still going to be referencing the same address object that exists on the original person. So if I mutate that, I'm still mutating my state. So now what I need to do is actually have to go and make another spread. So what I do is I say const address is equal to dot, 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 person copy, that personal, that address. So now I've got a copy of the actual person as well as a copy of the address, which is the actual object or the actual key that I myself am going to try to update. Now, finally, what I can actually go and do is I can say address.street is equal to e.target.value. But now the problem is I have to now go ahead and build my object back up. So what I can now say is personal person copy dot personal that address go back to my person copy, go to its personal, and then say that the address is equal to this new address object that I've just created right over here. So you kind of have to build the object back up. And now finally we're ready to actually go ahead and line 31 and call that person with the person copy. There's really just a lot going on to really just go ahead and update one simple key within our form. And so they always have to write such kind of verbose, ugly change handlers, which can be kind of error prone and hard to reason about is definitely not the solution to the sort of problem that we as React developers have that we want to make sure that we're never mutating state. And so one of the sort of obvious answers that we might want to, you know, sort of jump to here is, okay, this problem exists because the, because the spread operator only does shallow copies. But if we would have something that actually that can actually make a deep copy, then of course we would no longer have this problem, right? And that's actually true. And in fact, I'm actually going to demonstrate that that might be a potential solution, but in the end, that won't be the ultimate solution. So let me show you what I mean by that. As you can see, I've now brought in a function called that I'm calling deep copy change. And as you can see, I'm referencing uh, this function called deep copy, which I pretty much just installed using uh, yarn. So you can just go ahead. If you want to run this code yourself, you can go ahead and say yarn add deep copy. And then all this is doing is it basically takes an object and then spits back an actual copy where everything gets copied. So unlike where we're using the sort of spread operator where it only makes a shallow copy of the sort of top level object, but then the nested objects don't get copied. When we're using deep copy, everything actually gets copied. And so what now this allows us to do is actually allows us to write sort of way more succinct and easy to follow code because all we're really doing is we're just creating this one copy. We're now guaranteed that everything is in fact copied. And so now all we can just do is go ahead and say copy that personal that, you know, address that street is equal to e to target the value. Take this copy, pass it into the set person function. Boom, we're done. The whole thing is just three lines of code. So this seems like a really great solution, right? However, there's a problem. So let me demonstrate what the problem might be. So the first thing we're going to want to do is actually take this deep copy change and go ahead and pass it in to the on change handler. So before I even demonstrate the problem, there's actually really two problems with this one. So one of them is sort of rather obvious, but it's also not the biggest deal in most cases. But the obvious problem is that when you ever are trying to sort of recursively, because of course this is happening recursively, it's trying to kind of like, you know, traverse through your object and make sure that every single nested object or array within your state is going to get copied. 
This operation in of itself can be somewhat an expensive operation depending on how nested and how complex your data is. So that right there is already not the most performant thing in the world. But putting that aside, there's even, a, in my opinion, a sort of even bigger flaw that this sort of pattern, this sort of a, a solution will give you. So basically, let's imagine that we have another component. Here you can see we have another component called employment, okay? And then as you can see, this employment function is wrapped with the memo function that we're pretty much pulling in from React. So if you're not already familiar with what memo is, you can find a link to that video in the cards, or you can find a link to it down in the description box below. But the basic idea is what memo is going to do is just in a nutshell, is it's going to make sure that this function only renders when its actual incoming props are changing. So right, so typically when a parent goes through a render cycle, a child automatically renders unless if that child opts out of the render. In this case, we're using memo to pretty much tell the child, I want you to pretty much by default opt out of all the renders that your parent is going through, unless that the props that you are yourself receiving are actually changing. And so in this case, the way that we're gonna sort of check to see if the component is actually going through a render cycle is by actually console logging I am rendering. Now let's actually go ahead and render this employment component. So as you can see, we're rendering employment, we're passing the current employment by saying person state is equal, person state that current employment. That's the prop that we're passing into it. And so now the, the idea here is, if we're using ugly change, so let's actually demonstrate that. Let's change this back to be ugly change. And as you can see, we get the sort of one I am rendering, but then as I type into this input, it, the actual input is updating, but the component is not saying I am rendering again. In contrast though, if I was to go ahead and use the deep copy change, now as I'm typing, you can see with every single key press, the I am rendering is firing again. So effectively by using deep copy, we've effectively broken our memo. So the reason why that's actually happening is because again, what memo really is doing is it's pretty much checking to see whether or not the props that are coming into the components are new or are, are different than they were from the last render. And the way that it does it is by doing a referential equality. And again, I cover all this in sort of more detail in the other video. So if you're not familiar with what I'm saying right now, I highly recommend you check out the video. You'll find a link to it in the description box below. But again, it's basically doing referential equality to see whether what we're getting is actually a new object. But now since we're using deep copy, everything is always going to be a sort of new object. So in doing so, any sort of performance gains that you were hoping to get from using something like memo, you're gonna lose just because you're using deep copy. So aside from the fact that the deep copy operation in and of itself can be expensive, but you're also losing any performance gains that you wanted to get by fine tuning your application using memoization. So, so far we've seen that we can potentially do ugly change because that will actually give us the sort of performance benefits, but the code can kind of be very ugly and hard to reason about and hard to follow. Then we're like, okay, let's just use deep copy, but the, clearly that doesn't work because that's A, very expensive, B, breaks, breaks our memorization. Enter Immer. Immer solves exactly this problem. So what Immer is gonna do is it's gonna give us an API that's really easy to work with. In fact, I would almost wager to say that it's just as easy as this, but it gives us all the benefits that this gives us. In fact, it's not gonna be an expensive operation in and of itself, and also won't break our memorization. So let me demonstrate that right now. Okay, so as you can see, we're importing produce from Immer. So all I did was I just said yarn add Immer, and I'm importing this produce function from the Immer library. And then what I'm doing is this is the sort of exact syntax that we get to write. So you can see I've got my Immer change handler that I've now passed into my change handler on my input. And then what we do is we call the produce function, and the produce function pretty much takes in two arguments. The first one is going to be the actual sort of bit of data that you're trying to not mutate. What is the actual sort of initial data that you don't want to mutate but you want to make changes to. In this case, that's of course going to be our person state. And then the second argument is pretty much going to be a function. This function, you can almost think of it as like a callback function that you're passing to the, to the produce function, accepts an argument known as a draft. This draft is a sort of key to everything. The draft pretty much starts out as an exact copy, an exact representation. Copy is not the right word, but it starts out as a sort of exact representation of what your state currently starts out as. So whatever your state currently is, that's what draft will be right at the beginning. Now, what the really cool thing is now, to draft, you can do whatever you want. Meaning once you're in draft land, you don't have to worry about spreading or copying or whatever. You can literally write to the draft as if you're directly mutating your object as if you're not in React. So as you can see here, I'm literally just saying draft, the personal, the address, the street, is equal to either targeted value. Draft is sort of my playground. I get to do with it whatever I want. And then what this pretty much returns is it's gonna return a new person object, right? In other words, really what it's gonna do is it's gonna return everything that happened here. The difference is I don't have to worry about doing it, right? Basically, what Emmer is gonna do is it's gonna look at just the properties that I myself have actually changed and make copies of only that. And then we pretty much get this new person object that has not been mutated, been copied exactly as needed. We can then just go pass it to the set person function. Everything gets re-rendered, the input will render, but the key, the key point now is 
the memoization of our employment component will not break because only what we've actually changed will actually become new. Everything else will stay the same. So let me just prove that really quickly. Now we're using the error change function. Come back to my input. I type in, and as you can see, the rendering is not actually firing again by the fact that the console log has only been there once in the initial render, but all subsequent renders are not actually causing the console log to fire within our console. Honestly, you should definitely be using this as a sort of default go-to whenever you're starting like a new React application, just like you're installing like React Router DOM, you're already installing Immer. If you and certainly if you write if you're writing any kind of Redux code and if you're using Use Reducer, 100% Immer should definitely definitely be within your arsenal. It should be like a sort of default install, almost part of your boilerplate. Well, anyways, that does it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please drop a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next week in another video. Perfect.